What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our 2024 schedule preview and projected record series. Virginia Tech is up next. Uh, let's before we get to 2024, let's look back at the schedule from 2023. And here it was. Uh, they lost to both Purdue and Rutgers, and also Marshall. So they lost three non-conference games last year. Started one and four, and you thought uh, the season was it was going to be a disaster. But they bounced back. They got wins over Pittsburgh, Wake Forest, Syracuse. Even finished with a couple of road wins against Boston College and Virginia and were able to get to a bowl game, win that bowl game, get to 7-6. and six. Uh, But again, you look at this schedule, you know, it's a weird non-conference schedule in that it's not really a tough one. Uh, they don't play any great teams, but they don't have any easy wins. They don't have any FCS opponents if you look at this schedule last year. You know, Old Dominion and Marshall, two games that they probably felt like they should have won. They lost that game to Marshall. But uh, Purdue and Rutgers, two very average at best power five teams from last season uh, so it was, it was an interesting schedule there in the non-conference uh, they did play florida state but they didn't have to play clemson they didn't have to play miami uh did not play you know they didn't play notre dame of course you have the the acc teams that play notre dame so let's go to 2024 and here is that schedule and we'll start with uh, the non-conference they play at vanderbilt marshall at old dominion and rutgers so playing Marshall and Old Dominion again, and Rutgers again, so it's a very similar non-conference schedule, but then trade Purdue for Vanderbilt, and uh, there's your non-conference schedule for the Hokies. You look at the home schedule, it's Marshall, Rutgers, and Boston College, Georgia Tech, Clemson, and Virginia. So because they play two road non-conference games, they'll actually have six home games and six away games, uh, which is not something you normally see from an ACC team. Uh, but again, you got... Uh, a, a manageable, a, a very manageable home schedule. Clemson obviously going to be tough. I think Georgia Tech and Virginia could be kind of tough, um, but a, a real shot, a real shot in my opinion to go five and one in these home games. Uh, but four and two is is very realistic. But five and one is definitely possible. You look at the road schedule. You got Vanderbilt on the road, road Old Dominion on the road at Miami at Stanford. Yes, that's an ACC game, which is still crazy to me. Uh, at Syracuse and at Duke. So not a horrible non-conference schedule. Miami going to be the toughest game on that schedule uh, or on the road schedule. So Miami and Clemson, really the only two games that Virginia Tech, I think, could have a hard time with. Um, this is really not too tough of a schedule uh, if they can take care of business in the non-conference, which is something they couldn't do last year. So they'll open up with Vanderbilt on the road on the 31st of August, week one. Then next week, it's Marshall, September 7th. Then at Old Dominion on September 14th. Then they'll play Rutgers on the 21st. So all four of their non-conference games will be their first four games of the season. Then they'll play Miami on a Friday night on the road. That's going to be, I just have a feeling that's going to be a tough one there. Stanford the next week on October 5th. And that kind of works out because they have to travel out west. But because they have a Friday night game, they'll have a little bit more time to prepare for that game against Stanford. Then they get a bye week after that trip, a chance to get back and recover before playing another weeknight game against Boston College. So really nice way that that schedule sets up there uh, with the trip out west to Stanford. They play Georgia Tech on the 26th. Then they'll play on the road at Syracuse on November 2nd. Clemson at home on the 9th. Then they get their other bye week before playing Duke on the 23rd. And they'll close things out with Virginia. So again, uh, you don't have to play Florida State. You don't have to play NC State. Uh, really, this is a, a manageable schedule, and uh, you're going to see that with, with the projection. But before we get to the 2024 projections, let's look back at some of the projections from last season. Of course, they were 6-6 six and six in the regular season. We projected them to go 5-7. and seven. I predicted them to go 5-7. and seven. Athlon had them at 5-7. and seven. The over-under was at 5.5. So this was a team that was expected to be about 5-7, and seven, maybe 6-6. Six and six. They got the, the maybe. They got the 6-6. Six and six. They had a good season last year despite... Again, some tough losses early in the season. You know, if, if they played the way they finished the year, if they played that way at the beginning of the year, this probably would have been an 8-4 and four team last season. But uh, a good year overall just because it was some improvement. And again, they got better as the season went along. And this team actually has some momentum going into 2024. And they have a lot of pieces coming back as well. So let's get into the projection now for 2024. This is the scale that we use. If it's under 80 over, or under 20 or over 80, those are games that are pretty much guaranteed as guaranteed wins or losses. 20 to 29, 71 to 80 percent. These are games that are uh, games where a team's going to be favored by a couple of touchdowns or so, double digits. 30 to 39, 61 to 70. Games where I think the spread's going to be closer to a touchdown, six, seven, eight points, kind of in that range. So we'll start with the the easier wins. Um, I'm going to go with Marshall and Old Dominion. I'm going to put them in the purple. Look, they lost to Marshall last season. 
Uh, we know what Old Dominion has done in the past. I, I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't done a lot of research on these two teams, but just because of kind of history the last couple of years, we're going to put these games in the purple. I think Virginia Tech should be favored by seven or eight points in both of those games. And then you look at games where I think they're going to be about a touchdown underdog. That's Miami and that's Clemson. Those are going to be um, you know, tough games, but the good news is you get Clemson at home. Uh, Miami, again, obviously going to be very tough, but uh, I think they'll have a chance in those games. And then you look at the rest of the schedule, and it's really, I mean, it's it's a lot of 50-50 games. It's a, there's a lot of games here that could go either way. Uh, Vanderbilt would be a game in the purple, but it's on the road. Same thing for Stanford. Um, so those are two games where, again, if they were at home, you, you would give them a better chance to win. But and I still think they'll be favored in those two games. But I, you know, Rutgers, I think they'll be favored there. Boston College probably favored in that game. Georgia Tech's pretty much a toss up. Syracuse because it's on the road, maybe they're a slight underdog. Duke, I think they'll probably be favored a little bit in that game by a little bit. And Virginia at home, you know, we're talking about Virginia Tech probably favored in nine games this season. Maybe, maybe even ten, maybe eight, eight, nine, ten games. So they're going to be favored in the majority of their games. They have a chance with this schedule to have a really, really good season. Will it play out that way? We'll see. The averages would say that you know they're going to split all these games. So let's just say they beat Marshall and Old Dominion, lose to Miami and Clemson, and they split the rest of the games. Well, it comes right down the middle, six and six. So they are projected to go exactly six and six. Uh, we'll see what happens, but that would be again. Same thing as last year. I think with this schedule being easier, they have a chance to do better than that. And it kind of, if they can build off of how they finished last year, maybe more like an eight and four, or even nine and three type season for this team potentially. So I'm a little bit higher than this projection. Of course, we won't do our predictions for a couple of months. But Virginia Tech projected to go six and six. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Give me your thoughts on this team down in the comments below.